Hey, what's up guys? Paul Munoz here and welcome back to this mini workshop. So this is the second video in the series and I'm going to show you a more complex material using other features in Adobe 3D Sampler. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in Adobe 3D Sampler. This is where we left off from the previous video. So we created this uh, very simple material. I'm just going to go ahead and set it back to what we had before, which is uh, I think two and two. That's what we had in terms of the tiling. And I'm going to bring in our references. Uh, so we're going to be working on these uh, or the materials for this glass. Now, what I wanted to do with this one is to be able to combine two very different materials or two sets of very different materials. So something like these two is what inspired me to do this, um, this second glass or, you know, something like that. Something that has a bit of ceramic, but it has some, uh, I don't know, like a metal material, maybe wood, something like that, right? So two different materials. Um, so in this case, what I'll do is create the base ceramic, some kind of like blue, uh, cheap ceramic, something very rough, and then we can create kind of like a copper material that we can then uh, blend it together in Adobe 3D Painter. All right, so this is the one that we're going to be creating. We're going to start with the ceramic one. All right, so instead of creating a new file or starting from scratch, uh, this is actually our project where we can build multiple materials and then export them all together. So here at the bottom left, uh, here's where we have the materials. I mentioned this in the previous video. So we can start with something. Uh, we can duplicate this. Actually, we can right click and click on duplicate. And we can start with very similar parameters and maybe just change the, the image. That will give us something pretty, uh, pretty similar. Let's go ahead and right click, duplicate. Just want to show you how easy this is. I'm going to call this mog 01B, <laughs> kind of like an alternative to the first one, right? So this is what we have. and You'll see it is basically exactly the same thing, but we can click on the photograph, this one, and we can go to the photographs that I've collected. This one's right here, and this is the one that I use, and I can just click on something like this and drop it in there. Drag and drop, and let's move that out of the way. And 3D Sampler is going to update this material, but with a different base uh, or a different um, <laughs> a different image. So everything works pretty well. Um, and of course, you can just go ahead and, and tweak things like the intensity and, and the roughness and all of that. But we essentially have a very different material. But I just wanted to show you that once you have set up the, the parameters of the actual material, the base color and, and all of that can be changed quite easily. Let's go ahead and start with the ceramic that I mentioned. So I'm going to click on this plus button and click on new material. And we can rename that as well. We can call it uh, base rough clay or something like that. Um, I'll leave the names up to you. So let's click collapse this project. And let's bring in the images as well. So I want to start with something like this. This is a, a concrete image, right? Like a, the texture of a concrete or like a polished concrete. Um, but we can turn this very easily into a ceramic type of thing, right? Uh, we can do that one or maybe this one would be another interesting that has maybe some, some of the details that I'm going for. So yeah, let's use that one. So I'm going to click and drag, drop it in there, move this out of the way, select image to material. So I'm going to move, move um, as we progress in this workshop, I'm going to move faster in, in certain areas because we have um, covered that in the previous video. All right, so now we have the three bases. Now I'm going to select the base material and I'm going to set my height to 0.1. Again, this is not going to be concrete, although the texture is kind of like concrete. This is not going to be concrete. This is going to be a rough ceramic. Go to displacement, set it to 0.1. There we go. So now it's a little bit more consistent. Um, other than that, I think we are ready to go. <laughs> so this software takes care of, like I said, 90% or 80% of the, of the job. So this is what we get straight away. Um, of course, we can go to the roughness, and that is in the image to material. Go to roughness. And we can variate the value. And just by doing this, we can kind of like polish the concrete a little bit more. And we still have all the nice normal information and all these details there. Um, but now, you know, moving the, ba the base value of the roughness to a negative or, or to a very low value, it makes it more reflective, which is kind of like what we want. Although not that much. Like I said, <laughs> I wanted to go for something pretty rough in terms of the ceramic. Let's actually like look at the... Things are pretty rough in the references. So yeah, let's keep it very rough anyway. Move forward a bit. I'm going to bring in the 2D view as well and go to roughness. All of this was covered in the previous video as well. And I'm just going to increase.
increase the variations a bit more and reduce the softness, maybe increase the softness actually. All right, so something like this, I'm happy with the with the roughness. Um, and you know, everything else that 3D Sampler did was you know, <laughs> pretty awesome. So just by variating the roughness. All right, so those are the things that we have already covered anyway, just wanted to do a quick recap. The next thing I want to show you is that within the image to material um, properties, you can actually change the geometry details, which is pretty awesome. So you can uh, tweak how much influence of the micro details, the, mi the medium details, and the large details are in this actual image. And you can click on invert normal. So let me just show you what happens if I do that. I want to click invert normal. We can maintain everything, but now it looks a little bit weird because all of those indentations and all of those pores of the of the concrete texture are now sticking out so that's not what we want let's leave it as it is but i just want to show you it is there in case that um is something that you need to do with your original texture all right so if i bring in the normal and let's get closer um here's where you can see most of the of the micro details and that's kind of like what you see here as well in the, in the preview or the 3d preview so i'm going to change the micro details to zero and you see how like everything gets a little bit more polished because we moved that micro details to zero. So that's something that you can do straight away from the basic parameters uh, without adding any other uh, layer. So I just want to have a bit more of details. And I constantly, sh um, you know, rotate the environment to see the effect of the lights uh, on the material. The medium details, it's going to exaggerate it. That sort of like makes everything a lot flatter. So I just want to add a bit more of that. And the large details and the medium details, that's easy to see, or it's easier to see it in action if you go to the height map, right? So if I move to zero medium and zero large, you basically see um, what the micro details are doing for the height map, right? So uh, this is kind of like what I like to do. I like to select the normal map when I'm tweaking the, the micro details so I can see that in the, in the map itself and what it's doing in the 3D view. And then when I want to tweak the medium details and large details, I move to the height just because it is easier to see. It is actually doing it for both um, for both both maps, uh, but yeah, it's just a lot easier to see all of this variation in details here. So as a as a starting point, I think that is working pretty well. Remember, there's there's a bunch of other features or another um, set of layers that we can add to further refine this. All right, let's turn this off. And now we're going to take this material to the next level. So all of this kind of like uh, seam that you can see in here, uh, which, you know, if you're doing some concrete tiles, it would work just fine. But uh, for the most part, you want to have something that is tileable so that, you know, you don't see that and, and you can just apply the material to whatever object you want, right? So this is kind of like the next level up. In the previous material, we just left things as they were with the seams. But in this one, we're going to actually remove those seams. So let's move this thing. And let's go ahead and click on add layer. And I'm gonna type tile. So let's select tiling. So this is the effect that we that we want. And by default, when you select tiling, it's just gonna open up the, the 2D panel. It just make, makes it a lot easier to, to work with the tiling effect. And it sort of like breaks things apart a little bit, but it's just a matter of selecting this box and maybe scaling it and moving it a little bit just to create that sort of um, that sort of break, and then we can tweak that that edge or that seam, right? Now another thing that I like to do, especially with this texture that has a lot of contrast, if I go to the base color, it has a lot of contrast in the edges. So let's go ahead and turn off tiling before and before tiling we can add something else. So we can go to layers or to add layer, and I'm going to type transform. All right, and we click on transform. So you see most of the things that you will have um, at your disposal in here, they're pretty self-explanatory in terms of what the names are. Tiling is for tiling, transform is to transform that image and so on and so forth. So now we can go ahead and drop this below the tiling so that it happens first. So before the tiling, we actually transform that image. And I can take this and I'm gonna scale it actually up. Let me just bring in the image so you can see what I'm doing. So the original image is this. Right, um, but the software automatically makes it a square image. So what I want to do is get something closer to the original image in terms of the aspect ratio, and I'm going to move it down, scale it a bit like so. 
So literally what I'm trying to do is um, crop or, or remove that sort of very dark parts or that portion of the image. And that is just with this transform. And I'm using a pretty high res image. So I'm not too worried about the, you know, scaling things a bit. There we go. So I think that that's working fine. And I'm paying attention to the 3D view as well as I move these things around. All right, so that looks a lot better and we still have the, the tiling off. So let's click on that on and select tiling. And let's go ahead and move that box again. You can also click outside to rotate it if you wanted to. Um, so let's just leave it as it is. Maybe scale it a bit more. There we go. Just wanted to hide that sort of like spot in there. And if we get closer as well, we can enable the edge or go to the edge drop down. And here's where we can play around with uh, the blurriness of that seam. In fact, let's just turn on the seam so that you can see what it's doing. So that line, that um, highlighted light, um, <laughs> it's hard to see, but like when you when you enable the the show seam, you can actually see what this uh, tiling effect is doing. So we can change the threshold to see how we mix it and also the blurriness of that and the softness. So you can play around with that. The, the grid resolution, I usually don't change these, but again, these are just parameters that you can play around with. It's gonna be very different depending on what image you use and depending on how you transform that image. So I will leave it up to you to, to play around with that. Now, this is not gonna be perfect, but it's pretty good already. So we still have some issues some tiling issues, but this is what we're going to fix with the next effect. So let's just turn off the seam so that we don't see that. Um, so we're going to try to force that tiling. If you find that the simple tiling is not giving you the result that you want, um, you can force a little bit more that tiling effect. And that is with the next one. I'm going to type tile and we're going to make a tile. So we have tiling already. We're going to make a tile now. And that automatically <laughs> yeah, basically fixes everything. <laughs> so what this is doing is kind of like um, duplicating things. Let me show you in the 2D space. Yeah, just duplicating portions of it and, and moving it around. So in the make a tile selected, I can actually change the threshold. And you see, it's almost like a square that spans as I, as I move this along the threshold. Uh, but you can also add some smoothness to it. You can remove the contrast so it's a lot softer. Um, but just doing that, you see this is a pretty pretty nice tileable texture already. So that's exactly what I want. So we have a pretty nice texture. Let's collapse the, the 2D view. Um, so, so far, the new kind of like features that I showed you are the transform the tiling and the make it tile, really. The rest is just the same thing that we did in the previous one. All right, so the next thing is that I don't want this to look like concrete. I want to make, um, you know, add some color to it and maybe bring it closer to maybe maybe this type of you know the blue color of the ceramic maybe right so keep it rough and some variations in brightness as well but something that feels more like a ceramic right because this one is a bit too rough too much detail too much noise um and i want to have something more clearer maybe something like that so in order to do that we have a lot of options as well i'm going to click on the add layer and i'm just going to type colorize and we have, like I said, a few options. We're going to click on Colorize. This is basically a bucket like you do in Photoshop. <laughs> and it basically changes everything, um, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to click on the base color. And I'm going to select a maybe like a, maybe like a bluish um, cyan dark color, <laughs> something like that. Again, the color is you know totally up to you. But I think something like this would go um, I'm, I'm just choosing this color because I think it would go nicely as a, as a complementary color to a more orangey copper, which is what I'm going to do next. So something like that would be fine. Let's click OK. Uh, and that's it. We can just change or play around with the intensity of that color. I think almost 100% of it would work just fine. And you can keep the luminosity, which in this case I don't want. So if I click on luminosity, it's going to try to keep the bright uh, the brightness of the let's say of the black and white image below. So I don't want that. I want to keep, you know, it's almost like multiplying the color. 
right? And you can also target uh, different channels. So you have em emissive and normal here, but in this case, base color is what we want. That's it. So we have something pretty decent for this uh, for the ceramic, and we can work on making it a little bit more, um, you know, consistent in terms of the details, and maybe add some some scratches and that sort of thing. So that's the next thing that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to click on Add a Layer, and I'm going to type Equalize. So this is going to take all the bumps and it's going to try to make them consistent or equalize them. So in the radius, you can put this to zero, and it's basically going to be flat. <laughs> so now this is kind of like a rough plastic, as simple as that, or not, and it's not going to do anything. So you can use this equalize to, you know, bring back some of those flat areas. Um, like I said, I might not use it. Sometimes I like to test it out with on and off to see what it's doing. So yeah, it's sort of like removing the, the sharpness and, and how harsh these indentations are. So if you pay attention to these highlights, if I turn it on and off. So I think th this is working fine. Cool. So equalize is something else that you can try on. Um, I use it, you know, it's again, very, very subtle. I use it every now and again. Um, the next thing though, is something that we used in the previous video. So I'm gonna click on height or type height, height, normal height adjustment. All right, so we can take the normal, like I mentioned before, we can go to the 2D view of the normal and all of these indentations, we can we can play around with the intensity of them, right? And again, when you're working on materials, it's all about subtlety. So instead of going for something like that, that gives you all this noise, I'm just gonna go for the opposite, something very, very subtle. That's all. <laughs> so as you can see, all of the tweaks and everything that you do in this and the software, um, it, it just basically works <laughs> straight out of the bat. So um, it's just a matter of like combining these effects to to tweak the base material or the base photo that you use to suit your needs. So I'm using a concrete photograph to basically create a, a more rough uh, ceramic material, right? And you know, just changing the material properties like the roughness and um, you know, the height and the normal, that's what we can do um, to create your own custom materials. And to wrap up this um, this material, what I'll do is show you something else. <laughs> I'm gonna show you the combined color. Uh, this is something that you might wanna use. So let's type color and let's go to color variation, not color combined, sorry, color variation. So this color variation allows you to pick different colors. Let's turn this off as well. It allows you to pick different colors and you can create something a bit more interesting rather than just a simple blue, right? So you see it's overriding the blue that I chose before. So we can click on this color one and select the blue color, something like that, something dark. Click on the second one and go for something a bit lighter. And you can create um, crazy cool things, um, just increasing the, the color count. So I'm gonna go for three maybe, or go for four. And that gives you multiple values and I'm just doing this a little bit randomly, but just want to show you what it does. So it allows you to choose uh, different different values from the original image. Let's say if you were looking at the height map, um, you're basically targeting different different values of this image with different color. So this orange that is barely visible is because it, this one is targeting one of the the darker points like this. So if we look at try to find something. It's a, a little bit easier to see with the with the yellow one. So the yellow one is targeting most of those bumps or those indentations, and that's what you can see in there. Um, all right, so you can create some pretty cool stuff just by using this color variation. Uh, I'm not gonna use it, so let's just turn that off. I wanna keep it simple and you know concentrate on the variation of the material later on in 3D Painter. So I just wanna keep it very simple. So to wrap up, I just wanna add a bit more of kind of like a dust something that will accumulate in these crevices. So let's just do that. Let's click on add layer and type dust. And we have dust. There we go. So the dust is being added to those crevices. And I like to just increase the density quite a bit, as well as the roughness, um, just to see what the, what the dust is doing. So I think I, I kind of like the, the fact that there are some, some you know, some bits of pieces and particles of dust in the crevices, but this is too much. So I'm gonna move this density down a bit more. And maybe just make this a little bit lighter so that I can see better. 
All right, so let's turn this on and off. Oh, so that's adding a little bit of that dust, uh, which I think is working fine. Um, one more thing that I would check is, in this case, if I go to ambient occlusion, it is a pretty intense ambient occlusion. And this is actually what is causing the, the massive contrast between the details and you know the other polished areas. So we can tweak the ambient occlusion from the uh, image to material, right? So this is something that we haven't done, but it is there. So click on image to material. And just as a, as a rule of thumbs, when you want to change some of the basic parameters, always go back to the image to material because that's when you have the, uh, you know, the geometry, the uh, the height map, the ambient occlusion, and all of that. So from here, let's look for here we go, the ambient occlusion strength. So I can just remove that altogether, and as you can see, it's sort of like changes things quite a bit. So this is something that you might feel it works. Um, it works for you if you remove the ambient occlusion, and you know, for the most part, I think that's that's what I want for this. For this ceramic material but like i showed you in the previous video we can go back let's turn this off now um we can add the ao or the hide to ao and this one is going to look at all the changes that we've done in terms of tweaking the hide and the normal map and it's going to create an ambient occlusion based on that so let's click on from hide to normal this is the one that we used in the previous video let's turn this on so that we can see the ambient occlusion and we can change the spread actually the spread Let's keep it as, as a large number. And we're going to reduce this quite a bit. Let's go for 0.1. This is still pretty strong, 0 .0, 0 0.01. And let's turn this on and off. So it does bring a little bit of that dirtiness um, and contrast in those details. So I think it works. It works fine. I think I'm happy with that. But if you, let's say, if you reach the maximum level of spread, <laughs> the maximum the maximum value for spread let's set it to one um and things are still very sharp you can go ahead and blur this even further uh, so that's another tool or another feature or another effect let's click on layer and type blur here we go we can type blur and in the blur it allows us to blur everything at once so if i increase the blurriness of this it's kind of like destroying all the things that we've done. Uh, but I actually want to blur the, the ambient occlusion by itself. So in here, we can click on custom by channel and we can look at the ambient occlusion, which is this one right here. So ambient occlusion, custom blur intensity. Let's enable that. So now this is, um, this is kind of like a global intensity, right? Which I'm going to set to zero so that nothing else gets blurred. Uh, but you can see now the ambient occlusion, which is the channel that I just selected, is being blurred. So we can play around with that to soften the, the contrast between the, la the lighter and the, and the darker areas. All right, so I think that's looking a lot better. So again, it's all about the subtleties. You might not see much difference, but if I turn this on and off, there's a tiny bit of, um, of change there. So it makes it a bit, a bit less rough. <laughs> um, maybe I, I went a little bit too, too much to the other side. So I think this one is looking a lot better. So all we have to do is take the dust and put it on the top and that's it. So now we can apply that dust on top of everything. There we go. So let's select the dust and I'm gonna increase the intensity a bit more. Increase the roughness. I don't want the dust to be reflective at all. A bit more than that. And now I can play with the opacity. So I like to push all these lighters uh, so that I can see the effect of whatever I'm doing and then just turn them down a bit. Right, you can also play around with the cavity smoothing, but you know, I think this one is is working fine. Uh, the noise transition is, is quite interesting. Um, it allows you to, I'm not gonna change these values, but it allows you to add noise in the transition between the areas of dust and the areas that doesn't have dust. Yeah, so a little bit of that is fine. Uh, the contrast as well. Remove a bit of contrast and that also helps to variate the roughness a bit. So let me just show you what that is doing to the roughness. So it just gives you um, an extra level of control for the roughness itself, uh, which I think is making it look more like ceramic now. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If in fact, I think the the color is too light. So after we have tweaked everything in terms of the 
the other layers, we can go back to colorize and we can change these to maybe like a more of a bluish tone. It's a bit darker. You just need to wait until everything gets updated, but that's it. You can create all these cool materials from scratch um, or just tweaking some of the settings, right? So again, let's go to project. I'm going to right click on base rough and I'm going to duplicate that one. And I'm going to name it um, ceramic rough orange. In fact, let's just go ahead and rename this one as well. So, so. all right, so we have a duplicate, an exact duplicate of the, of the blue one that we just created. Now I just called it orange. Um, so all I'm going to do is go to the colorize, change that to an orange color, maybe a bright orange color and click OK. And if I want to variate this even further, another tool that you can use is the brightness and contrast, pretty much like you would do that in Photoshop. So add layer, brightness and contrast, and you can choose specifically what channel you want to basically change the contrast and the brightness. So you can select the base color, but you can also use ambient occlusion, height map, all of that, right? So base color is what I want. I can increase the brightness and add more contrast or vice versa. I can remove the contrast. And this is kind of like a nice um, terracotta. Yeah, I kind of like that one. So I'm going to leave this one as the orange one. Um, and we can increase or decrease the amount of dust as well. So add more roughness to the dust, add a bit more of the density to it. So it's, um, it's a little bit rougher than, than the other one. So this is a, you know, a pretty fun way to, once you have established the first material, you can duplicate it and variate some of the, the settings of the layers that you have already, already created and basically have a bunch of different additional materials. All right, so let's go ahead and click on Save Project so that we save all the variations that we've created with this, uh, with this project. All right, so if I bring in my references, we have created this blue material, the ceramic, and now we need to create something more like this metallic copper type of uh, material that goes along with this second asset. Right. So again, I'm going to leave this video here and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to create the copper material.